Greetings everyone, and great here with another HMRs for replay. Spawn on the south side as the blue French, we have Liquid Dimu. Spawn on the north side as the red Mongols, we have Leenok. What's it said? The point right next to the wood line. He's going for a lot of wood. What is he thinking? We got, oh, looks like he's going to die for maybe some tower rushing. His task point out, of course, is Ovo. He's going for some spearmen now, going for times two spearmen. He will need a bit more stone in order to get out another times two spearmen. As right now. Now, we've got a spearman rush now advancing on forward. We will now have a forward tower being put up by red. Blue does have his enough gold here for us to look cavalry. Let's get some uh, pokes there. This will severely delay the Mongol tech up. He has not gotten his 100 gold just yet. As we'll be claiming off of the sheep. He has claimed, found a lot of sheep there as well. The cons now advance to forward, maybe try and eye to engage his opponent. And deny, this will deny his opponent the gold there. And now it's going to be, uh, does Garrison the outpost there with some spearmen. And now his opponent's going is going for the Deer Stones, giving the Yam network early around the uh, outpost there, allowing his villagers or spearmen to sprint quicker. Balance now advancing forward, does spot these two other gold deposits. Scout pushing forward, we've got a number of archers here. School of Cavalry, since he has not been able to maintain any sort of gold income, he's not been able to deploy out any royal knights. We do have the scout pushing way forward, Khan's moving around with some sheeple behind him. Now we've got the feudal age for the Mongol. Khan's moving around. He could potentially uh, put a tower next to each of these gold deposits, help deny them. And now we've got a pair of horsemen now on the field. They're currently early horsemen. You will need to research the horsemen upgrade to make them not early. There's the horsemen upgrade now. Let's get a good kill there. We do know how these horsemen are now moving around. We have these towns that are now being built there, trying to, and that will help really secure up that gold. Those points now can maintain some gold income. Maybe we'll pull out some rolled knights now. Nope, it's going for a horseman. And the Khan does see some arrow fire there. The Khan does have health, does have health regen, so doesn't worry about getting that recovered all too much. Horseman now trying to forward, trying to hit down these spearmen. Got this horseman here, has a good number of archers here as well. Horsemen, of course, do bonus damage to these archers. And Red is now eyeing for this four town center here to claim the steer. Does want to kill off that deer there that's close to the town center. Does pick off that one as well. He's taking time to pick off all the deer nearby. Maybe he's trying to corral this one over here, herd it over here. Who's not eyeing for some towers over here? He says these two gold deposits here. So blue does have some good gold that's not near this tower. Let's take out that wolf now. With both sides eyeing the eco up for the time being. Blue is just being hyper defensive since the Mongol player has been quite aggressive so far this game. We potentially find some of this uh, food there. That's about the roll knight now. And now this uh, our has not got it with arrow slits. Game one decent arrow there. Now 
Got a pair of spearmen and horsemen over here. Guess we'll make sure to get a plenty of spearmen since versus the royal knights. We'll find an angle there on these villagers. We'll get some good hits there. We we'll use the movement speed there to help really close the distance. Those are collecting up a lot of steer that will give them good food, uh, food boom. And now we do have this, uh, outpost now going to be receiving some fire there. You could advance forward of these horsemen, but this outpost is going to go down. There's just way too much fire here. He won't be able to deal with the Royal Knights alone. Spearman could ungarrison start getting some stabs on the Royal Knights. And they are hardened spearmen as well, but they will quickly go down to these archers. Good, so deep day. Start taking some time and start torching down some of these palisade walls there. Who's going to advance forward of these royal knights now? Hopefully, Red does have a number of spearmen. He does have currently 10 spearmen, one more on the build queue as well. On may go down right there. There's a lot of uh, angry uh, roll nice here. He does manage to get the sprint off as well as build up a scouting falcon. Now it's best for him just to run away. Horseman may go down as well. Let's get a number of spear in here. It does have an outpost here. Load up with arrow slits. Spear in advance forward. They do not get any. Uh, Spear braces there. Going to start advancing forward. He has a good number of horsemen in this region. He does got quickly out one of these royal knights. Multiple royal knights are starting to go on down. Horsemen will make a breach. Now they will start to enter. I'm curious about something. It's just five villagers on gold. Pounds are going to send some arrows there onto this force. And more palisade walls going on up. The more defense the French player gets, and the harder it will have him to push on out. He does have multiple gold deposits inside his territory. And we do have the deer not collected up right there, so the Mongol player will need to retask those villagers somewhere else. There's some nice, delicious deer over here. Now I got the spear trying to throw some torches here. Now I got the horseman trying to throw some torches as well. Here, now being pulled on out as well as this outpost. And he's trying to, and he's repairing up the wall while in combat. Now we've got the step for doubt being put on the field. The step for doubt does allow him to deploy, uh, collect gold, 50% more gold whenever gold's dropped off that location. So that'd be a great spot for collecting gold. Yep, does pack up that career immediately. Build that as quickly as possible to get the better gold income. The Mongols now castle A, so now they can pull out their step lancers. And he still actually has wait. The Venom Horseman. So he has the horseman upgrade, but I see the early horseman icon. What? Okay, they're just they're all horsemen, so there's some sort of bug right there. They're showing the wrong type of horseman. 
Unless, oh, here we go. Yep, he's now going finally getting the veteran horseman upgrade. But yet, it still says early horseman there. He does have veteran horse or regular horseman. Not sure what's going on right there, but of course we do have now the veteran royal knights being pulled on out. We also have now this prayer tent. It will get out some shaman, demons. He could be a bit more aggressive with this uh, separate out. This is how I like to play. Is I like to grab the forward gold. If I have a also to pull out trade caravans in, in the background as well. So pull out the forward, get some forward gold, make sure there's enough uh, outposts to protect it. And if anybody starts attacking that region, the separate doubt has plenty of health to withstand enough time for me to to respond to any sort of attack. You know, some of the shamans starting to grab some of those, what's it called, uh, relics. Yeah, let's go and fast forward since both sides are equaling up. Got yeah, a good number of defense here, but the more you play defensively, the worse off you generally are. Oh, that scout received some spring gold fire. Now some of these secret sites are being captured on up. Very nice. It's hard for the Mongol player to capture all the secret sites. It's more just a way to force your opponent out of your his walls. And I got this monk here. Try maybe trying to go for a relic. And now I do have the royal bloodlines research. That can be researched faster than your opponent can get out the bloodlines research. This is an Imperial Age technology, and the French can get that in Castle, making it a pretty good window for those Royal Knights to get some lot of good work done. I got the Sacred Sites being interrupted by each other. The Sacred Sites is going to be captured on up. Now Royal Knights trying to hit this flank here. Horseman trying to stop him, but the Royal Knights will also stop him. Of course, we've got the outpost here with the Yam network, so it should be able to get a rapid response over this region of Spearmen. He's going heavy in Spearmen, that's for sure. And he also has the stone investment on siege engineers, so now he can deploy frontline various forces. Go down there. These uh, horsemen do get uh, pulled off the side. He's starting to pull out some outposts over here, trying to get this gold vein in the coverage of the step bird out. Now there's going to be a massive engagement here. We do got some archers here as well. Crossbowmen are not going to be very useful in this engagement. Spear now charging forward as well, ripping apart some of those forces. We've got more spearmen over here and more archers. Red does have Gendam as Spearmen, the Horsemen will have that trouble getting those archers, the Crossbow will not going to help out too much, and the Royal Knights will have their own time to capture the point and do anything as well. Let's use the Speed Arrow, they're trying to get some more mobility. Let's see how the Megano there quite quickly, got a Traction Trebuchet here. Red does have some Crossbow here, not going to be all that great against these other Archer forces. But they will be used versus uh, these uh, Royal Knights. Separate out not being pulled out right there, trying to get some more gold from that region. Now I do have some lancers being pulled out on the field. Red needs to take time to refill up Rupert's forces. He just doesn't have enough of forces to engage this various archer force. He's now pushing way on in, trying to get some good work done. Overall, there's just too many Royal Knights. Royal Knights are far too kinky this moment in time. They literally have twice the health of these horsemen. Let's get inside that down center there. Let's get inside this uh, outpost as well. There's some spring galls in some of these emplacements. This is just an arrow emplacement. Spring galls do some good, put some big holes in those knights. And now the Texas 
sending some fire as well. There's nothing inside that tower, so that's fine if he loses it. There's not some advanced forward, does have some crossbow in the mix as well. Red Sword and Claw back in this uh, fight. Stepford out. He has plenty of health remaining. We're going for another tower there. This point is already being decaptured. This point is still fully captured. So it's not lying for a counterattack. Villagers may receive some hits. Villagers do not have Loom just yet. Maganel will get overwhelmed. He needs those Maganel. Starts repairing up for Maganel. Saves the Maganel. Crossbowman gets good hits over here as well as more spearmen. There's four starting to push way forward. There's a number of uh, men at arms now deployed on the field as well. Crossbowman will like to hit them. Maganel does get a fire shot there. This forest is now being pursued, even by a wolf. There's not been support of this forest in this region. The spore is not fully claimed just yet. It's nine villages in this region. Let's find a four. A uh, wolf there, and I do also have a four keeping put out by blue. More spring golden placements. Looking inside this uh, tower there, the spring gold one is still firing away. These roll knights are not pushing way forward. Doesn't have a whole lot of area stuff for our defense this region. We probably need to go for the con arrow. Getting this uh, stone con arrow is actually very important. It increases the duration by 7 seconds. In comparison, I think the base is 5, so that gives the increased duration of the con arrow by up to 12 seconds. There's a a raid, gains some more income from that, which is nice. It's great to hit the forms back because every form counts as raid if you set them ablaze. Looks like this force is falling back, Ketrick's getting overwhelmed. And now I've got these Royal Knights trying to avoid these spearmen. Wolf is coming to support the spearmen. We also have a, another outpost here. It's doing a good job, boys, pushing out these outposts. That's on the wall of the region. And now, do got these tra traction trebuchets of base four? Does have good escort force. And seeking out that stuff is very handy for the Mongol player, getting a lot of extra golden food. That research is still being deployed out. It's just the level two basic one. I guess increases to 50 50 and when the base is 25 25 so it doubles the amount this increases up to 75 75. this down here adds a bit of stone to the raid as well fraction trebuchets are getting some great damage fraction trebuchets are a variation of the counterweight trebuchet that gives higher attack speed Basically, the powered by people pulling uh, pulling it rather than just having to wait pulling it uh, to launch something. It does have a piece of force here. There's a good amount of force here. It's going to be a messy fight for both sides. Maganos need to hit this archer force. Fires a volley there. Gets a great hit onto them. Putting big holes here, but one of the Maganos do go down. Tracker trip chase starting going down. Two of them are still remains. The keep does go down as well. This force now advancing forward, trying to gauge this army here. Maganel fires a volley. Gets a minor hit there. Dragon Trebuchets are still plenty healthy. Can start seeing down the other infrastructure there. Four force will be pulled on down. Luckily, Red has a plenty of spearmen. Now this force falling back. Does get a good hit there with that horseman. Maganel is almost down. Got this melee force now engaging as well. Oh, that's a bad time to do a fall back. He still has to deal with this force. So the siege units are starting to go down. Lose the world Knights' charge on four. Let's see the Maganel there. Track the trip chase of plenty of health. Some spring gold being blown off by a red. 
So these forces are being picked on off. Vampire Ace for the French player. We've got the White Stupa being put off by the Mongols. I prefer the other landmark as Mongols. This gives you a good amount of gold gener or stone generation. So that's pretty much it. Well, the other one buys you three units, and in general, the three units are generally worth more than the than the stone production. Sure, the stone production allows you to get more research, but I tend to go for a lot of trade as well and get the trade research for more stone for stone for trade. Both players are now Imperial Age. The Mongol player has a pretty good mixed army. The French player does not have really mix of army. Go for a lot of crossbowmen, as well as horsemen and knights. You now got the elite uh, spearmen upgrade. Also, the elite spearmen are going to be very good versus the French composition because they're going to like hitting everything far in the couple archers, which he's not building any more of. Takes out that royal elite horseman quite easily, as well as that one. Secret sites now being captured by Red right there. More shamans trying to capture up more secret sites. Horsemen trying to go for a flank. Let's get some of these forces here. Got some more outposts being pulled out, trying to stall his opponent. We've got more villagers of base support trying to secure up this goal. Now these knights are going to go straight to this villager line. It's hard for the Mongol player to control the terrain. Let's get the lead to Spearman upgrade now. Starting to capture the secret site. And now we're going to have all three secret sites soon be captured by the Mongol player. He's inside his town center receiving a lot of extra fire there. He's going to lose a lot of these villagers. Spearman now getting some great damage there onto these knights. This six sites being decaptured. This six sites being captured. Red does have a decent force here. This needs to start engaging over here. And this, all those elite knights do get cleaned on up. Red's down a good number of villagers. This gold class almost cleaned on up. You may want I start getting towards this gold over here. Play out some extra outposts in that region. Royal Knights are turning on forward. And these Royal uh, Horsemen and Knight is falling on back. Got a triple capture in favor of the Sacred Sites in favor of Red. He does have good Banner Rams. Banner Rams could charge forward to bash down some front line gates. Horsemen still on a wild goose chase for these spearmen. Batterings not pushed way forward. There should be a lot of uh, battery capability because there's a lot of horsemen in that region. Now we got looks like some hand cannoneers in this mix as well. They're annihilating those horsemen, no problem. Cross from the region. This is a number of horsemen here as well. Ready to out some more spearmen. Track to track chase. There's a lot of seeds here. Right now he's having trouble stabilizing. Right now he's set everywhere and the English players have or French players doing some good work. Broke we'll some more of these towers. Now these horses now being cleaned on up. We got a couple of Magnells and Vasi still alive for the Mongol player. Barons are completely charging forward. Just sending him forward to track his phone is a good idea to help stabilize the game because right now he's just getting overwhelmed. Six sites still captured. Step right out has been redeployed over here, trying to claim up some more of this gold. Mongol player has a good amount of reserve of food and gold right now. And now we got these knights who seem to be a lot of damage there onto the track of trebuchets. Got some hand cannons not going on out for the Mongol player, and we got these guys still advancing on forward. Oh, we got a cannon placement? Okay. And it does some E3 damage. Good damage there on those horsemen. Horsemen are engaging the horsemen. Maganels make it overwhelmed. Has a hand cannon support as well. But Maganel does go down. 
And right now the Mongol players are having trouble stabilizing the front line. French players making good production. French players good amount of reserve of food and gold. Good as there. Now the uh, horsemen advancing forward trying to get some good engagements. Horsemen make it their advance. So got a good number of hand cannoneers. Horsemen do bonus damage with hand cannoneers. At the same time to get some extra uh, engagement. And he has not gotten his uh, bloodline research, so he's having less health with the bonus horsemen. He does need that extra health in order to gauge those forces, but I think he's a little bit starved on trying to maintain the front line at the moment. Magnus are falling on the back. His red force made a push on forward. Trying to engage now. Magnus finds a good volley there on these forces. That red sword advances forward, starting to counter attack. A lot of large number of from here. This is not what red has. He doesn't have any armor really on the field. Magnus is starting to get focused down. Armor appears. You're seeing some fire. Here, maybe we can get a single arrow up on firing. Oh, here, please now iron for a four keep inside his bones base region. So he can probably pull out some siege weapons to take that out. Right now, just past the max, got blues now pouring in forces in this region. Got now these outposts here, providing some good defense. One of them upgraded with cannon. Got multiple cannon placements. This one being also upgraded the cannon as well. Now going for the defense, giving him nearby units plus two plus two armor for five seconds. Cannon placement does cost 375 stone. That is a slim amount. In comparison, improved bloodline stone research costs 1,000 stone, so he's basically denying really healthy cavalry for these cannon placements. Right now he's fighting against a lot of horsemen. Cannon placement will easily go down, can't fortify them with stone either. Megano does fire a volley there, more royal nice to charge on board. Still got this keep here, got this keep here. This trebuchet may start firing away. Getting some good kills there on these villagers. He is not realizing that there's a keep, multiple keeps in his base now. His front line is starting to disintegrate. His back line is starting to disintegrate. French players are streaming in more and more cavalry. Doesn't have a good lot of, lot of wood income. Mongol player has making good wood income, but right now he needs a wave of battering ramps to batter down these uh, keeps. He hasn't realized this yet, just yet. He, now he's realized it. He's packed up his town center. He's going to be abandoning the region. Farm floor up there. The pastures can be targeted over the task over here to get the sheep in that region. He does manage to save his cannon placement, though those villagers quickly get ripped apart. He doesn't have any gold income at the moment. Oh, he does have some gold income somewhere. Way over here. These horsemen sort of overrun his force. He needs spearmen to engage these horsemen. Or knights, or as lancers, should say. Just go a bit high, heavier units. So, got these capes in this region. He's going for some battery rams now to deal with those. And that town center is being pushed towards that keep. It's also set ablaze. Right now, Red's military is very, very small. He needs more spearmen. He needs more. Also, mass spearmen would probably be best to engage the knights. Crossbowmen would do minimal damage. You have to shrug that off. He just needs more spearmen. A couple of these keeps not being upgraded to various cannon placements. He's spending all the stone on those cannons. These keeps now. Oh, 
Another key being employed on now. Batteram's getting some great damage from here. Not looking good for Mongo player. He's not building anything either. He's low in resources. He's lost a large number of villagers. Let's pack up this town center. From these elite horsemen have seven pierce armor. So they can withstand a lot of archer fires. They can't really violent the town centers for a fire for a defensive fire. He's getting some more wood over here. Does mean does need a wood? Clean this infrastructure. The battery ramps could just be charged forward. But now they distract his opponent, but also getting some extra income because of the raid bounty. Fort Architects not being researched. They get harder with battery ramps, get some damage in. Oh, or get the raid effect in. Villagers are now hitting these uh, battery ramps significantly. And it's getting some good hits on in. On here, he needs to throw his uh, either speed arrow or defense arrow. One of two. Large number of uh, horsemen getting annihilated right there. So that's a large number of horsemen here. I think right now he does use the defense arrow, which gives him plus two, plus two armor. Magnus is getting some good damage on in as well. Pursuit does fall back now. He has managed to stabilize, but right now he still has a lack of military and lack of economy. He does he does doesn't have much gold income either. This one's claiming this gold, and that's the last bit of gold on the map. He doesn't have any small trade routes either. Not like he really keep them secure at the moment. And he will lose these prayer attacks, and so he's going to lose the gold income from the uh, relics. Not sure where the other one is. I'm pretty sure he had claimed a lot of relics. I think his bonus already claimed up those relics. He's not trying to either counterattack. He can't really afford a counterattacking. He doesn't have the military for defense at the moment, let alone for attacking. Successful. Oh, there's a lot of exposed villagers there. But honestly, if he kills those off, his point would pull out more military at the moment, which actually would be a bit more detrimental, wouldn't it? Are they supposed to advance him forward? There could be some raid, but it does have a large number, does have a keep there, plus the town center for defense. Keeps on being pulled on out. Does manage to get the monk there. And could pass the time to get the sacred site active. Here comes the uh, spearmen attacking. They can fast force down some of these farms for some gold and food. But there's just too many keeps nearby. They're getting attrition down very quickly. We have some hand cannier support on the field. They don't care what they shoot at. No, that's a spring gold. Cannon's not firing away, gets damage over here. It's a cannon range. They do have 10 tower range, so it's not bad. And cannon is firing. Some of these villagers are starting going down. Most of the wood has been cleaned on the map as well. At least on uh, the Mongol side. So he's actually right out wood and gold. He has stone. He has a good reserve of stone. He is sort of he's pulling invaluable stuff. Things that cost high in wood with the stone dual cost. That will help 
defray the cost. He also needs biology a long time ago. He needed that cavity extra health. Plus some other research here wouldn't hurt either. Because getting plus 30% yep. health on a cavity is very important. There, Magnus finds a big volley. So we are trying to kill these horsemen. Doesn't have a mark here, and the uh, Mongol player does back out the game now. This is Anna Grant saying thank you for watching and on to the next replay.